Word of warning. The character of Master Voluminous is simply that, a character. He might not be evil, but he is definitely a bastard. So try not to let what he says offend you, okay? Enjoy. Welcome, listeners. I am the mighty Master Voluminous, teacher, commentator, and most importantly to you, storyteller. Today we continued the Voluminous Reads series with another story from the horror novella Pinky by Gift and Yedike. To get you up to speed, if you are new, Pinky is a collection of six stories about women in abusive relationships and dangerous situations being possessed by an evil spirit called Akupinki. This entity is no one's ally. In the last episode, we looked at Akonadala, a woman who spends a whole day being stalked and harassed by her ex-boyfriend. Today, we're going to do things a little differently by looking at a re lesbian relationship. Our person of interest is a young woman named Jordan Forey. Jordan Fury. She puts as many clothes as she can into her large backpack, as well as her passport. She takes a box full of saved up money and puts it in the bag. She slings her bags over her shoulders and enters the living room. She takes a look at the shared apartment, takes several deep breaths and heads to the door. She opens the door, gasps and backs away with her eyes widened. Her girlfriend, Mari, briskly walks in, frowning with her fists clenched. She slams the door, puts down her handbag, and demands an explanation. With her legs shaking, she says that she is leaving. Mari gets closer, telling her to drop the backpack, and she almost backs away. Breathing becomes harder, but she stands her ground and tries to push past. Mari grabs her by the arm and pulls her back. Last warning. She swears and pushes past again, getting slapped in the process. She holds her cheek, eyes wide and watery. Mari's mouth hangs open. She looks at her hand, closes it and drops it. The other hand is extended to offer an apology, but is rejected. She removes her hand from her reddened cheek, revealing a faint scar, unslings the backpack and goes back to the bedroom. Mari follows and sees her sitting on the bed, sobbing, with her head buried in her hands. Mari slowly walks over and wraps her arm around her, apologizing, kissing her head, and promising to talk later, then leaves. After hearing the door shut, she lays back in bed and stares at the ceiling for a minute. Wipes her eyes, then gets back up. She picks up the backpack and walks to the door, but stops short of grabbing the handle. She looks down, gritting her teeth, then sighs before going back to the bedroom. She begins to unpack everything and puts them back in the cupboard. Mari returns three hours later to see her partner reading a book on the couch. She does not take her eyes off of her book, but gives a dispassionate greeting, saying that dinner is in the fridge. Mari walks over and kisses her forehead. She takes a breath, reciprocates with a kiss of her own, much to her girlfriend's delight. Mari digs into her handbag, pulls out the gift-wrapped box. They both apologize for earlier. She takes the box, unwraps it and opens it seeing the smooth brown case inside. She opens it and sees a golden medallion with a large pink jewel in it. The jewel has a black circular dot in the center, 
making it resemble an eye. According to the shop owner that Mari bought it from, it is said to bring protection. She frowns for a moment, but decides not to speak. She puts it on and asks how it looks. Mari kisses her again and promises to answer after dinner. After making love, they go to sleep with Mari's arm around her. She is still wearing the amulet, unaware that the eye is blinking. She gently lifts Mari's arm up, slowly slides out from under, and lowers it back down. She walks out of the room, still fast asleep and unaware of her actions. In her mind, she sees a memory, a previous attempt at leaving. Mari is speaking in a low voice. She feels her back hit a wall. A sharp blade pierces and cuts her cheek. The vision shifts. A large pair of scissors is in her hands. Mari is lying on the bed completely naked. Each hand and foot is tied to a corner, meaning her legs are spread open. The scissors are also spread open, the lower blade moving towards Mari's crotch. She lets out a scream, muffled by a cloth tied around her mouth. In the reflection of her wide eyes is a big round face with big glowing eyes, grinning with massive teeth. She opens her eyes, and the end result of her dream lies on the bed before her. From throat to crotch, Mari is sliced open. She drops the bloody scissors and backs away, tears rolling down her cheek. She turns and runs out, ignoring that she is still naked. The door of the apartment is wide open. There is no one on the other side. She stares at it, and with tears still streaming from the ducts of her eyes, she lets out a snort, which becomes a chuckle, <laughs> and a titter, and a giggle, <laughs> and a cackle, a full laugh from her belly. At all of these stages, something pushes her forward, her pace quickening until she reaches the balcony. The laughter echoes throughout the block from top to bottom. <laughs> oh, 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 this, this one was too good, honestly. This one was just too good, too good, too good. Oh, I mean, yikes. Hold up, you, she, she took a scissors to your face? And you stayed in that house? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yikes. And you wonder why I've been single for the last century. Women are vicious, okay? Say whatever you want. <laughs> Women are freaking vicious. Especially to each other. Maybe it's not the patriarchy after all. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I'm messing around with you. Relax. But truly is a sad tale. Very, very sad. She tried to leave and she died anyway. But an interesting situation, huh? See, Pinky is supposed to come after, is supposed to possess women who are in dangerous or abusive situations. Right? But Mari was also a woman. Hmm. That seems like a logical error there. <laughs> Maybe there's more to it. Why don't you send me an email? Maybe you can figure out what happened. It might have something to do with why Jordan committed suicide at the end of it. Hmm? Well, that was an enjoyable read. Feel free to let me know how you feel. Also, if you have any stories that you would like the master to read on your behalf, use the other methods of communication that have been mentioned. Goodbye, my readers.
<laughs> I mean, seriously, fucking scissors to the face. I'm out at that point.